every single 1B paper, you're going to be asked to answer a Corm's question and draw a graph. I have never seen a single 1B paper where you don't have to do that. So I'm going to show you how you can guarantee those 5 plus 6 marks. So that tends to be 11 marks in every single 1B paper. And remember, there's 110 marks available. So it's a way of guaranteeing yourself 10%. So with Corms, this is an experimental design question. For example, design an investigation into the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. This is a very typical example. And I'm going to show you how to use what I call the variable layout to guarantee yourself six marks. So the independent variable, and I would literally write it like this. The dependent variable. I'm writing myself a scaffold right now to get myself going. The control variable. And you need to list several here. You want to provide a time frame and you need to state repeat for each value and calculate an average because remember that will help you spot any anomalous results. So how will I use this scaffold to answer this question? Well remember that the independent variable is what you change. So what are we changing here? Design an investigation into the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. So what we're changing here is the light intensity. And I'm even going to write that. And this is how I would honestly answer the exam question. Really say how you're going to do that. By altering the distance of the lamp. And give a range here. so important e.g i'll hold that lamp 10 centimeters away from my plant 20 centimeters 30 centimeters 40 centimeters what is my dependent variable well the dependent variable is what you measure so what am i measuring here well i'm measuring the rate of photosynthesis but in your experimental plan it has to be something tangible that you will physically measure so i will measure the volume of oxygen gas produced using a gas syringe. There's so many options here. You could have said, I will count the number of bubbles of gas produced. But the reason looking at the volume of oxygen produced is relevant here is because, remember, the equation for photosynthesis is, and I'll write it up here, carbon dioxide plus water forms glucose plus oxygen. So we can examine the rate of photosynthesis by looking at this oxygen production. And indeed, that's what I'm doing. Control variables. So what am I keeping the same? I'm going to keep the species of plant, the length of plant, because remember, these will affect the rate of photosynthesis the temperature, the carbon dioxide concentration. These all need to be kept the same. With your Corms experiments, you want to provide a time frame. Make sure it's sensible. I will measure the volume of gas over 60 seconds. And then I've said repeat for each value and calculate an average. So to show you where my marks have been awarded, giving my independent variable as being the distance of the lamp, sometimes there's a second point available for giving the range, and sometimes you need to give the range just to get that first point. It's of vital importance. Then measuring my volume of oxygen will get me a mark. Guys, please do not write the word amount. I will be screaming if you write the word amount anywhere in your exam. It needs to be something measurable. So in this case, volume. 
mass, concentration, all these sorts of things are good science words. Make sure it's relevant to the question being asked. Control variables, at least two to three marks available here. One relating to the plant, temperature and carbon dioxide is a really good set of control variables. My time frame will get me a mark and then repeating and calculating an average. Now I'll show you a past paper question. There is a relationship between the colour of flower and pollination by insects. Design an investigation to find out if the colour of flower affects how attractive it is to pollinators. Include experimental details in your answer and write in full sentences. So what are we changing? I will choose a variety of flower colours. Because after all, that's what we're changing in this experiment. E.g. red, yellow, orange, pink. What about our dependent variable? So what are we measuring? Be really specific here. I will count the number of bees, because they're good insect pollinators attracted to each colour flower. Now the control variables, at least three or four. What will we keep the same to make sure it's a fair test? We need to keep the species of flower the same. Type of pollinator. Generic things like temperature, time of day, weather. I imagine if it rains more, that will keep the bees away. Let's pick a time frame. One day. And you must repeat and calculate an average. And that will guarantee your full marks. So let's highlight the marking points, different colours, that's a mark, count the number of bees as a mark. In terms of our control variables, we've got a mark for species of flower, type of pollinator, temperature, so that's three further marks. We have a time frame mentioned and we're repeating and calculating an average, so tons of marks. I'm going to talk you through some top tips for drawing graphs and we're going to start with what I think is one of the most difficult graph types. So the scientist Richard Dole collected data about the deaths from cancer in the 1950s. The table shows data for four groups. Plot a bar chart to show the number of deaths from lung cancer and from other cancers for each of the four groups. So we're looking at lung cancers and other cancers for each of the four groups. Then in terms of what goes on your y-axis and your x-axis, your y-axis is what you're measuring. It's always the dependent variable. We need to go from 0 all the way up to 35. So pick a sensible scale here. I'm going to go up in tens. Remember, we need to occupy as much of the graph paper as possible. And then just use that table to help you with this label. So we're gonna write number of deaths, no need for units this time. And then I think the x-axis is more difficult to pick through, but on the x-axis in this particular case, we want to mention whether it's non-smokers, light smokers, medium smokers, or heavy. So these first two thin bars, I'm gonna assign non-smokers. Then I'm gonna leave a gap and write light smokers. Another gap, medium smokers. And then another gap and heavy smokers. So I'm gonna write type of smoker here. And then for each category, we're gonna need two bars, one for lung cancer and one for other cancers. So non-smokers, lung cancer was zero whereas other cancers was 15. And I'm going to use a key whereby 
my slashes represent other cancers and my blank represents lung cancer. Now we know for light smokers that 12 got lung cancer. Whereas 35 got other cancers. Draw this nice and accurately in the exam. My iPad's not lining up perfectly. Making sure that I'm representing my key correctly. Medium smokers, 11 got lung cancer versus 24 that got other cancers. So yeah, these graphs are more tricky, but I'm hoping that you'll feel more comfortable as to how you'd go about it watching this video. Now heavy smokers, 13 got lung cancer. And 18 got other cancers. I'm now going to show you how to draw a line graph. So that's for continuous data to show the number of light coloured moths and number of dark coloured moths from 92 to 98 using a ruler to join the points with straight lines. So this is a very typical example. Remember, as I've just said, your dependent variable, so what you measure, it is important that you know your variables in the exam, that will always go on your y-axis. Remember I said it's the numbers which are more difficult to plot. Look down them, these are difficult to plot, versus your independent variable, what you change, which in this case is the year, these numbers are easier to plot, so they'll go on your x-axis. Remember we want to occupy as much of that graph paper as possible, so that means picking a sensible scale. Let's just write down exactly as the table says here, remember to include units. So if a unit mentioned like kg is mentioned in the table, include that in your graph. Now in terms of year, we're going from 92 to 98. It's worth writing those little lines to help you line it all up. Wonderful, I'm occupying lots and lots of my graph paper. And then what's our lowest number? One, scan down what's our highest number? 27. So I'm gonna go zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I've occupied a large piece of my graph paper. It's up to you if you want to draw a key or just label each line. I'm just going to label each line. So I'm going to take this column first of all. So in 1992, I had nine light colored moths. In 1993, I had 11. Use little crosses to represent those dots. 94 was 11. 95 was five, 96 was one, 97 was eight, 98 was 13. It says use a ruler to join the points with straight lines, so do follow those instructions. I'm gonna label that light colored moths. I'll just swap color so you can see my next points nice and clearly. For dark colored moths now, 27 for 1992. 18 for 93, 7 for 94, 1 for 95, 4 for 96, down to 1, and then up to 9. Join the dots again. And these are your dark coloured moths.